Welcome to Northwoods Kindred. I am your Godi Bodvar. Now, I had a question in private, private message, so I won't dis disregard their confidence, but uh, it was somebody who wanted to start doing personal ritual, but they don't have the money to get a ritual kit, not especially one like mine. So I decided, uh, myself and my Gidya behind the camera, we're going to hit Goodwill and maybe another thrift store, and we're going to see if we can find us a basic ritual kit, and then in time, as more better or quality tools find us, we can slowly replace them in our kit, but at least we'll have something to start with right now. So what do you think? Leave me a comment. Would you get your altar and ritual gear at a thrift store or consignment shop? Pretty much everything up here that's my ritual gear and my Gidia's ritual gear is from thrift stores, consignment shops, and estate sales. Either that or it was gifted to us or we made it. Um, nothing, nothing was purchased at like one of the new age shops. They have everything you need, but you're going to pay an absolute premium for every bit of it. And a lot of it is just mass produced China stuff. So you and everybody else has the exact same piece of equipment. In our case, most of this stuff, well, these are probably the only pieces that are like it that are actually in service to the gods. Even if they're not 100% unique, it's very unlikely that someone else has acquired that piece of gear for this purpose. So it's very individual to the owner. Some people think that without the right gear, that's a barrier to entry, but I wanna show you the very first offering or bloat that I ever did was in the middle of the desert overseas and I used a canteen cup as a bowlie and this was my Thor's hammer. What this is, is it's like the can key to a little metal tube that holds a pop-up pyro pyrotechnic. That's what I had right there and I offered the one thing that meant the most to me, coffee. That is the point where I realized that I can do that. I can do this with what I have anywhere in the world. When I have a need, I can do it. So that was a very, very life-changing event for me. So ultimately, the reason that, that I'm making this video now is because I want you to just get started. I want you to go out, get the equipment, and then start there. All this gear is replaceable, and there's, there's a process. You can transfer the energy from one piece to another. Believe me, I've been through 15 or 20, maybe, or more bullies in the time that I've been practicing. And each one I have just transferred that energy forward and forward until I got to the one that I ultimately ended up on. Now the gods work in coincidences. And coincidentally, today we decided that we were gonna go out and we were going to build an entire ritual kit at a couple of thrift stores on a very, very limited budget. And the reason we did that is for two twofold. We want you to see that you can do it. It doesn't take a lot. You can click cans for a day and get enough money to go buy a ritual kit and get started. Or if you happen to be, uh, like in the case of some of the older Gothies I know that are traveling Gothies, um, not like a thing, but like they, they do travel sometimes to go do a wedding for a friend or uh, you know go to Ireland for a funeral or, or a wedding or you know to go help someone through a hard time. They'll travel and they'll travel with some sort of a ritual kit because, of course, if you're going for this type of a purpose, you're going to need to do some kind of ritual. So, like in my case, I'm currently building a travel ritual kit so I can go do go these services to people that aren't right here close to me. And I don't necessarily want to travel with a kit that I've spent a lifetime putting together. Um, I don't know what I don't know what TSA is going to do. I don't know if, if it'll ever make it there, if it'll get lost on the way. So that's one of the reasons we shot this video. And the second one is just so you can, you know, if you're new to the path, maybe you're young, you don't have a lot of money, uh, a lot of di disposable income, that shouldn't be a barrier to entry. You should still be able to do it. And we're gonna prove it today. So we've gone to, our first store was Goodwill. The second one we went to is a little thrift store attached to our local animal shelter. And then the proceeds from that one go to help feed and do vet care and, and adoption services for the animals. And that was it, too. So before we set out, we started with two lists. There was a list of things we have to have and things we would like to have. And we managed to fill every item on that list, plus a few little things that we were looking for anyway. See, the gods tend to work in 
coincidences. I guess some people call them small miracles, but it's a coincidence. It's it's no coincidence that we decided what we wanted to do, that we were going to do the service to the folk by assembling this kit and show people how to do it on the cheap. And then we went out to do it and found everything we were looking for. And coincidentally, found a few things that we had been looking for for our own uh, specialty items for the, the kits that we have now. Because there's, there's a lot of little add-ons. You can continue, you can collect ritual gear forever. So in short, you just gotta trust the process. You gotta have in your mind a clear intent and idea on what you want. And then you have to be open and aware or the coincidence that puts it in front of you and the circumstance that allows you to acquire it. So. Now we have a Facebook group called Northwoods Kindred. Go join our group and put up a picture of your, your Horg, your Stali, your Vey, your Ritual Gear, your sacred space with your equipment kind of laid out, sort of like what we have here. It doesn't have to occupy half your room like ours does. It can occupy a corner, it can be a little thing. We just wanna see what you use. And you don't have to be Ossetru either. Uh, whatever equipment you use to have your little ritual space, um, if you don't mind sharing, then throw it up on the group because then everybody can kind of look at yours, get inspired, get ideas in their head about what they want, and then coincidentally, they'll be able to acquire that piece, those pieces of gear when they're out and about running through their daily routine. Now, the nuts and bolts of the list, the must-haves, a bowly, a hammer, an offering cup, an oath ring, and an altar cloth. Those were going to be our bare minimum because of the way we practice. Now, if you practice different than us, you might have some other, some different minimums, but that's what we wanted. So some nice haves, nice to haves, what we would like is we wanted an altar, some kind of an altar. So a stali or a horg, something like this, preferably one that would open up like a box so we could store things inside of it. And this one's got a nice padded top, but we have the altar cloth so we can kind of take the essence of that with us. And it always looks the same anywhere we set it up, even if it's on a tree stump in the forest. We also wanted some sort of a fire element and some kind of an effigy to a god. And we have a lot of gods and goddesses, so that was really easy. Could have been an animal totem. It could have been a statue or anything that to us was an effigy to one of the gods. So we found that great sewing box, which would make an an excellent altar and store our gear in it, but we also splurged a little. We found this tabletop wine rack, which would be a great place to not only store up to six bottles of an offering, but it's a, an excellent stand to keep the altar up off the ground and at a convenient height for actually using it. It did come, it was a little damaged, the hinges here were damaged, so I had to get creative and I just used some leather strapping and some, and some fresh screws and fix the hinge and now it's not as good as new but it's really good so we'll go back to our list of must-haves and we're starting with the altar cloth so now we don't have to carry this stali anywhere if we go anywhere we're basically taking the entire essence of it with us when we take this altar cloth the bowley one of the most prized items on the list the hammer now most of this we got at Goodwill. The hammer we got at the second thrift store. We could not find a single hammer in all of Goodwill. Not one single hammer, not even a rusty old claw hammer in the tool department anywhere in the whole store. So we're like, well, I guess we don't get a hammer. I guess we'll just use our, our hammer amulet. And we walk in the next door and there it is laying on the shelf for some reason in the kitchen stuff. Uh, but it was meant for us and it doesn't look like it's ever been used. We have our oath ring. Um, oddly enough, perfectly suited to, to be an oath ring. It is brass and copper and kind of looks handmade. It may actually be handmade, but this is a, this is a good oath ring to have, especially as a starter. Last, we have an offering cup that we found at Goodwill. It's aluminum. It's a really nice, uh, ornate kind of medieval looking offering cup. It's a really good tool. So if we were going to pour libation to the gods, we would have it blessed. This is the kind of the situation where we would use a horn eventually, or even a horn cup. But barring that, we pour it out, we have it blessed, we take our drink, we give the gods their share, and we have made our offer. And the last thing, which is on the nice to have list, would be some sort of a fire element. Now we went with the candelabra. We also found some incense burners at a, at a reasonable cost. I even got an extra one to add into my office. 
but ultimately the candle was the winner when it came to a fire element because it fits on this little teeny tiny altar fairly well. And the last thing we wanted was some sort of an effigy of the gods. And we thought, you know, there's so many little ceramics, there's so many little things you can get, little animal creatures and animal totems and things like that. But for some reason, when we walked into that second thrift store, this picture of must be Freya was hanging up right there. So if you can picture this as being your starter altar, starter offering place in your room or office or wherever you keep it, and it will all pack up nice and neat and store away in that container when, when it doesn't need to be set up. So now, the big question is, how much did all of this amazing equipment cost? So looking around here, and I know you've seen a couple of spoilers that I've had laid out, how much do you think this whole kit cost? Um, maybe give a good guess on the must-haves and a good guess on the would-like-to-haves, maybe, or the whole kit, whatever. Just pick a number, tell me what you think the thing costs. So I'm not gonna worry about tax, or military discounts or any of that business. We're gonna look at the price tags exclusively. So first thing we'll go through is the must-haves. Uh, ultimately, this is it, and you can set it on any end table or anything that you have. So the must-haves. The altar cloth is $3.99. Our hammer, a buck and a nickel. Our bowly, an earthenware bowly, is $2.99. Our brass and copper oath ring, buck fifteen, and our really cool offering cup, ninety nine cents. Now we're gonna add our Stolly box, which did take a little bit of work, but not much, and it was a uh, five ninety nine. And if you splurge and got the wine rack base, that's another three ninety nine. Our fire element was ninety nine cents, and I donated the candle, but what would that be? Twenty cents more or whatever? We're not gonna count that. And then our effigy of a god, our picture of Freya was $5.10. So the grand totals are $10.17 on the must-haves and $16.07 on the nice-to-haves. For a grand total of $26.24, $26.24, but you can get it for under $15 for just the basics. So one advantage, even if you're not new at this, if you've been around for a while, if you have to travel, you can put together a kit pretty much anywhere you land if you need to, or you can put together a nice little travel kit that you can take with you and not be too heartbroken if you lose your ritual gear. And potentially even if you have to go somewhere to perform a wedding as a Gothi, you could go pick up all of these items at the local thrift stores or consignment shops, perform the wedding, and then gift the couple with those materials so that they have uh, the proper ritual materials in their household moving forward. I think that would that would be really sentimental and mean a lot to them. I hope you found this video useful. Go ahead and share it with somebody who you think might be able to get a little bit of use out of this information. And may the path to your goals be paved by coincidences. Hail the folks.